Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Tranquility by James Emerson. Published by Lucky Duck and Board Game Hub, this one to five player card game is all about tranquility. Placing down cards, relaxing, and of course, a little bit of strategy involved as well. It's similar to games like The Mind, in which players are going to be secretly playing down cards quietly without being able to speak or communicate to each other, and just revealing their actions as they present what they have onto the field. Your objective is to fill up the entire grid full of cards without running out of cards from your deck or being able to perform an action. You'll also have to play a start card before playing the finishing touch, which is the finishing card, and success accomplishing the grid. If one player runs out of cards and can't play an action, or basically the grid can't be filled, you'll lose the game. There's also a ton of variants, that being a single player mode, and a ton of additional cards that you can use to increase the game's difficulty or change the way the game is played. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward, but a lot of complexities along the way. Let's show you the game Tranquility, and then of course my review. To start the game Tranquility, you're going to start by creating a grid, a 6x6 six six grid of cards that come in the game. These cards are pretty easy to distinguish between the others, because their front and their back are the exact same, boats sailing on the setting sun. Place them down to form the grid that looks just like this one here. Then create a deck of 1 to 80 cards. That means that the deck is going to have numbers 1 through 80 in their top left and bottom right corners. They all have numerical values on them, so all the rest of the cards in the game you can go ahead and set aside. After it's shuffled, place it down. Then you're going to take 5 finish cards. These cards will be shuffled into the deck as well. After that, deal out cards to each player so that each player gets as close to equal of decks as possible. Then, take these starting cards, one for each player, and shuffle one starting card into each player's individual deck. After that, go ahead and have each player draw five cards. Any of the other cards that you're not using can go ahead and be removed from the game and you're ready to play the game Tranquility. After setup, this is what the game should look like for a three player game. When playing with more or less players, it'll simply differ in the number of cards in each player's deck, but the number of cards you start with in your hand will be the same and the number of cards in the pool will also remain the same as well. Start with picking a player to go first, and once that happens, no one is going to be speaking for the rest of the game, except when one unique incident happens. That first starting player is going to take their hand of cards, look at what they have in their hand, and then choose one of two actions. Action one is play a card on the grid. Action two is discard two cards from your hand. After you've chosen one of those two things, draw back up to five cards from your hand. If there's no cards remaining in your deck, then draw the remaining cards that you have, or if there's not enough, just draw whatever is left from your deck and then pass the turn. Remember though, if you can't take an action on your turn, you're going to lose, and you have to fill this grid up with a start and a finish tile on the board in order for you to succeed. This player will go ahead and start their turn, and they'll go ahead and place out a card onto the grid. So in this case, I can choose to go ahead and play this three out. Now when placing out cards, they're going to represent, be represented by numbers. The bottom left is going to be your lowest number, and the top right will be your highest number. And the way it works is it goes from lowest to highest in that order, from the bottom left to the bottom right, up to the next column, bottom left to bottom right. Every card you play is going to be adjacent to the card next to it, and if you play it on one of the sides, it will be adjacent to the card based on the values um, presented. So in this case here, the top left-hand second column will be adjacent to the card on its right, and the card in the very bottom right here. And the same would be said for this one over here. It would be adjacent to this card over here, and it would also be adjacent to the far right-hand side one. So that every single card is always going to have two cards adjacent to it, except for the first card and the last card in the grid. After you have placed your card, then of course you just go ahead and draw up to your maximum hand size and pass turn. A few things to note though, however, when placing cards. When you place a card, you have to make sure that you're able to place it, because there are certain rules to the game. If you wanted to, and you wanted to place a card next to, for instance, this three here, the only way you would be able to do so is if you could discard the number of cards um, if, if from your hand equal to the difference in the numbers. So for instance, if I had this one here and I wanted to place it in the bottom left-hand corner here, the difference between one and three is two. Thusly, I'd have to discard two cards in order for me to play that number one card. When I discard cards, I'll put them down, face down, next to the pile uh, as my discard pile. Neither I nor any player in the game will ever be able to see discarded cards once they are discarded. And of course, players will never be able to see their opponent's hands or cards that they're discarding when choosing to place cards adjacent to other cards. 
if for any reason you are placing down a card that is adjacent to one or two or addition to two cards you can choose between the difference of the card you are placing and either one of the adjacent cards you are placing at two so for instance if i were to place a three in between a one and a seven i could choose the three and one discarding two as opposed to the three and the seven having to discard four and that's basically the idea of placing down cards there's a few other things to note. Uh, one thing to note is that there are finished cards, and the only way to win the game is by playing a finished card as an action. When you choose to play the finishing card, you must have this entire grid filled. If you do not have the entire grid filled, you cannot play this card. Another thing to note, too, is that there are start cards in the game. And start cards are played instantaneously as soon as one player draws one. And the moment a player plays a start card is the moment when every single player in the game is going to go ahead and have to discard eight cards. If you're playing a two player game, for instance, then you're only going to, you're gonna, every player is gonna draw two cards and then discard down to eight, or discard eight cards. So, cause normally people are gonna have five and five and maybe you're, um, one of the players is gonna not have enough cards to do so. And so that's kind of how the variant works. A start card must always be played before the finishing card, and only the first card that is, first start card drawn must be played into the field. The rest of them are basically free cards that you can utilize for discarding. And then, that's the idea of the game. From one player to the next player to the next player, playing a card or discarding two cards and drawing back up to your hand size of five. If you play adjacent, discarding the difference between either the one that you played adjacent to or a choice if you have placed it adjacent to two of them, and attempting to fill up this grid. There's a lot of complexities and differences and challenges as well as a bunch of different game variants. You can go ahead and add unique cards that have unique abilities like a Kraken or some Stormy Seas cards and that will tell you in the rule book what cards you'll take out and remove in order to put these guys in or whether you just simply add them to the game to make a bigger more complex version of the game and then of course there's also a single player mode variant as well if you played games like the mind or other games in which you do not speak but cooperatively work together to finish something this is going to be very very reminiscent of those type of games it plays in 20 minutes it's really quick let's talk about my review now tranquility is a silent social card game and i really enjoy these type of games some people are not going to find these games in their wheelhouse and others are going Going to really enjoy them. Uh, if you're somebody who likes to talk a lot, then this is probably going to be a game that you're not going to be enjoying as much. It's a very zen-like experience with a lot of complexities and strategies. You have to watch what your players are playing, what you think they might be playing next, why they chose to play a certain card in a certain area, and then utilize your hand and cards that you have in your deck in order to further their goals, and of course they need to further yours. It's completely cooperative, and you need to work together in order to win without saying anything, and that's always going to be a challenge, and I enjoy games like that. The mind is always been a huge favorite around here. We've played it many, many, many times over and over again, and I feel like this game is going to be in the same wheelhouse. They're very different games, but they have the unique same strategy of placing down numbers based on the lowest to the highest, attempting to place them in certain areas of a grid, and avoid having to place them on too close or uh, on numbers that are too far away from each other. If the spread is four cards, it's going to be a very huge detriment to you because you only have a limited number of cards in your deck. When your deck runs out, that's it. You don't have any more. It's basically like your life total. And of course, another unique and interesting thing I like about this game too is you can place cards anywhere on this grid that you want. You can simply place a card down on the grid, not adjacent to anything. And it's a good way of not having to discard cards. But if you place incorrectly, it can be a very huge detriment to your player group. Uh, placing down maybe a 30 in the very bottom row might be very, very uh, difficult to come back from because players are then going to have to work in order to maintain the rest of the cards above that one um, using only 40 to 80. Always remember you have 80 total cards and one of each number. It's going to be very vital for your success. Always assume you wanna have the one or maybe a two or a three in the very bottom left and hopefully a 70, eight, nine or 80 card in the top right. Cause you always wanna have a couple extra cards to discard and cards that you can be close to and having to place adjacent because you will eventually have to start placing cards adjacent. Never start the game by placing two adjacent to each other too soon because it's just going to cost you cards from your hand. You want to utilize those cards as much as humanly possible. The base game is challenging all on its own and you're going to take a few turns just to learn how the game works and then it's going to take you a couple games to understand how to really, really master just the basic elements of tranquility. And I really enjoy that about this game. A game that's simple, 
easy to teach, easy to play, and uh, something that you're gonna wanna play over and over again, but yet develops complexity, more strategy, and makes the game a little uh, simpler as you play with the same players over and over again, start learning unique little tricks or skills. What I also like too is when the start card comes down and you have to drop down a certain number of cards, eight cards, um, that's when you can speak. That's like the one portion of the game where you can kind of talk to each other. And I suggest using some strategy um, or discussing as much as you possibly can about where you want to place and what you want to do when that card drops. Because the moment it does, everything goes back to being silent. I would also suggest putting on some zen-like music or literally just any music at all while playing this game. Kind of enjoy each other's company and try and avoid speaking to each other or like making facial expressions or getting angry when a player plays a card. Just kind of play cards down, see what they do, see what other players do in response to that and you will learn playing this game as you move on from turn to turn. Players are going to kind of acknowledge what cards you're playing and deal with your mistakes and you'll deal with theirs as things come up and that's really a beautiful aspect of this game. A small couple things I'm not a huge fan of. The game takes uh, a bit to set up as far as the grid goes. Uh, it's The Mind is one of those games where you just sit down and play. Uh, this one here, you've got to actually create a grid space. You have to have enough table space in order to play it. And of course, this one here, as you can see, just this table space barely fits this game. Uh, it does fit the game, but just barely. And you should keep note of that. You're not going to be able to play this game literally anywhere. Uh, we even tried playing on the carpet the first game, and you know, it's not the greatest experience. You're going to want to play this on a tabletop. You're going to want to have enough space for it. And you're probably going to want to have at least, uh, I don't know, I like three players for this game. Because the more you work together, yes, it does maybe a little more challenging, but it, it kind of brings out a little bit more beauty to the game. And this game really is beautiful. The artwork is great. The quality of the cards is great. The fact that it comes with a bunch of different expansion content. And if you go ahead and look in the rule book, it'll tell you the basic game setup. It'll explain some of the basic variants of the game and the end game and how it works. And then, of course, it'll also have a... Uh, variant page as well. So you can set it up in different ways. Maybe you want to play the high arc or the pyramid formation. And then of course it also has a one verse one competitive formation. And then it'll also talk about the different cards like these Stormy Seas expansion cards that you'll be utilizing in the game. It'll be on here too and how you kind of put the sea monsters and jagged rocks down and into the deck and how they're utilized and when they're placed. They function kind of like the start and finish cards as to some of them having to be placed. Some of them uh, move around the board and kind of eat other cards or prevent you from playing in certain locations at certain times. A bunch of unique little portions and additions of strategy, which is nice because one card in this game can change the entire way in which you play it. Overall though, Tranquility is an excellent game. It's a ton of fun. It's great quality, made by great companies, and I highly suggest you take a look at it. Additionally, from what I hear, there is another version of this game, or not a version, but another game uh, from this company. I believe it's Board Game Hub, which was on Kickstarter most recently. I'll go ahead and post a link for that one as well. I haven't played it, but I have heard good things, and I really, really enjoyed this game. This is going to stay in my collection for a long time and it's going to sit right next to the mine for me. So if you're interested, take a look down below. Link in the description, pick up the game Tranquility. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Tranquility. Like I said before, link in the description. You can also go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Hit that subscribe button, the bell notification button, uh, so you can see more videos that we create every week, every weekday from Monday through Saturday. You can also go ahead and check out our live streams every Sunday, 6.30 p.m. PST, except for this Sunday. We're going to be at a wedding, Josh's wedding. So not enough people to do it because nobody in the stream is going to be here. But every other day. <laughs> you can also go and join us on Patreon. A buck a month goes a long way. It greatly helps us out. We do greatly appreciate it. And we're looking forward to creating more content for you. All right. That's all I got for you this time, guys. And as always, I look forward to tranquil waters with you next time.